Welcome back, you guys and you guys and all of us to this place that we come every so often to learn things about stuff. Uh, today, we're looking at individualism and collectivism. So I'd like you, in your notes, to be able to differentiate between the values and assumptions associated with individualism and the values and assumptions associated with collectivism. Specifically, we're looking at individualism and collectivism as two forces leading up to the French Revolution. But in order to understand that, we need to look at it in more of a, a broad picture. So we have some notes here that contrast some of the values associated with individualism and collectivism. With individualism, we have self-reliance. We have individual initiative. We have the idea that your destiny should be yours to both determine and ensure that your quality of life, your standard of living, is up to you. So from an economic standpoint, individualism looks a lot like capitalism. The idea that you know, if you work hard enough, then you might be able to enjoy a good life. But your good life is reliant upon your hard work, not the hard work of others. Individualism also has the idea that politically, we should have human rights. That human rights should not be exclusive to one crowd, one select group, the elite group, the, the nobles, the oligarchs. That everyone qualifies for these individual rights. So, Individualism will also include human rights like freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of association. Whereas collectivism, economically, is more about cooperation, about collective responsibility, about common instead of self-interest. So collectivism, economically, begins to look like socialism. When instead of working for me, I work for we. An authoritarian version of collectivism is Marxism. And Karl Marx is remembered for saying that he wanted people to live from each according to their ability to each according to their need. So I should work as hard as I can for the benefit of others. That's economic collectivism. Politically and socially, collectivism is about adherence to collective norms. It's conformity instead of individuality. Instead of celebrating uniqueness, we want everyone to be the same. Simulation, homogenization. We have a nice T-chart here that I added since the beginning of the class. It's borrowed from the 30-2 textbook. You're going to see it again in 30-1 next year because it's in my 30-1 lesson on individualism and collectivism. I think that it really captures some of the key values of the two ideological schools of thought. What should take precedent? The survival of the group or the uniqueness of the individual? Is it about your personal potential through individual effort or is your potential attained through collective development? Should we have that conformity or should we ce celebrate your unique characteristics? Is the group entitled to invade your privacy? In collectivism, there should be no privacy. There's conformity. Under individualism, we expect privacy. Associated with individualism is this idea of liberalism, the idea of change. And from a causes of the French Revolution standpoint, we're talking about a time of change away from feudalism. Feudalism was a collective existence, being that your identity was strongly associated with your collective, your village. Your village was where your ancestors had been born. For generations, your village defined your family. It's where not only your parents, but grandparents, great-grandparents, you could go back centuries, people lived in the same village. And you didn't travel too far away from the village. So your life was very village-centric. Because in the village, that's where your ancestors were, but that's where your grandchildren will also be. 
So people really identified with their collective, their village. And, and not only was that a big part of their identity, but central to that village lifestyle was the idea of public property, common land. That there's common land that you could go hunt on. There's common land that you could go and farm. And when they began to enclose the common land and sell it for private property interests, then there's this rejection of collectivism. And when people began to leave their villages in search of employment at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, moving to cities, urbanizing, working in factories, losing their connection to the great chain of being that was you know, generations of their family, now we see forces of individualism. So at this time, there's going to be some like Edmund Burke that's going to see the shift towards individualism as a negative thing. Edmund Burke, for your cast of characters, Burke, B-U-R-K-E, Edmund Burke is going to talk about a great chain of being. And the idea that we have the luxury of today because of the sacrifices of those before us. And we need to honor that. We cannot change too quickly away from their morals, their values, their sacrifices. So you have some, like Edmund Burke, talking about a great chain of being and the idea that we must honor our ancestors and continue their morals and, and their legacy and their values. And you'll have others that will see like Voltaire that will say that everything needs to be questioned. Nothing is above being questioned. So not only should we question our village, question our church, question our family, but we need to question the essence of our being. So it's a great change. The enlightenment will be this time where, where there's gonna be a lot of new ideas. And uh, some of it fits under that umbrella of individualism, of liberalism, of, of progress. So this quote about liberalism is the philosophy of our time because it does not try to conserve every tradition of the past because it does not apply to new problems, the old doctrine solutions, because it is prepared to experiment and innovate because it knows that the past is less important than the future. That's a rejection of birth. That's a rejection of conservatism. That's a rejection of feudalism and, and collectivism. And it's saying we need to go in a new direction. That's the spirit of the Enlightenment that is going to cause the French Revolution. There will be no French Revolution if the hearts and minds of the people are still loyal to the old regime, the ancient order of France. You can only have a French Revolution because the people are visualizing something new. And they're willing to work and sacrifice to achieve it. That's why I added those two things. I added this cartoon to your document as well, because now in the cartoon you can see how potentially you get tested on this. On the right of the cartoon, you have a, an individual that has a very individualist lifestyle. One person in the vehicle, they have bumper stickers that say tax cuts now, privatize social security. Uh, they want to see a system based upon economic individualism, on capitalism. And we can infer that the person is, is not a part of a collective, not a part of a family. Whereas on the right, we have the idea that um, there's a person who's living as part of a collective, there's some sacrifices being made for the children, that sort of thing. So here's a cartoon, and the answer to it is, uh, is B. What is being contrasted? Collectivism and individualism. So one way that you'll get tested on this, individualism and collectivism, is can you see elements of these two ideologies within sources? In order to see the elements, you must first know the values and assumptions that both schools of thoughts are making and how they contrast with each other. Once you're able to do that, you can also apply it to, there's another excellent source on individualism versus collectivism. It's a collectivist source because we have this sympathy for this individual who's down on his luck. Oh, that poor clover, he's missing one. So he lives in a society where there is inequality. And if the government's not there because the government's practicing individualism, and if no one helps him, then we can infer that that three-leaf clover will become a two and a one-leaf clover and then will pass away. So it's, a, it's an emotional appeal for us to, to aid those around us. It's for us to question selfish individualism. And we can get it as far as saying, can we, can we respond to a longer quote? Here's a quote about, about collectivism. 
The state determines all that is morally, socially, and materially valuable. That's collectivism. The state is going to tell you what gives life purpose and what gives you identity. Therefore, it has the right and obligation to monopolize all power and authority, controlling all aspects of life. Although this is a 20th century source, it sounds like King Louis XIV. I am the state, the Sun King. So even though this isn't absolutism, it sounds like absolutism because the state has absolute authority. Now, in the 20th century, we'll talk about totalitarianism where the state kind of circles back to this idea that we're going to control all aspects of your life, like the Sun King did in the old regime. So I'd like you to be able to contrast individualism and collectivism so that then we can learn about some philosophers like Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Montesquieu, and then we can look at the causes of the French Revolution. That was the purpose of this first interruption.